Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials. In this video, we are going to talk about Spring Security. So Spring Security, it's an entire playlist by itself. So we are just going to scratch the surface of the, the content and we are going to learn the essential for the securing your endpoints. So since we are working with Spring Boot, we can uh, make use of the starter. So I'm going here until dependencies and I will copy this starter and I will change this to security from the same package spring framework dot boot by doing this you will see that now the application is somehow uh, secured so checking the logs you will see that we have like uh, okay you have this uh, running somewhere you will see that we have a uh, security password so let's uh, let me start again so by just adding the spring boot starter security you do have this using generate security password because now your application is making use of the spring security features uh, filters not features and uh, if you don't use this password your requests will fail so if we go here to Postman and uh, we try to request all animes, you will see that we have 401 because the filters uh, from Spring Security are being applied to everything. So if you do not have like the basic authentication, that's what this is going to ask for. You are not going to be able to return any data or post or put or do anything. So using Postman, we can just come here and then we select basic auth. By default, the basic of is a user, and the password is that huge password you have there. I'm glad that I just try to see. There we go. This is the password. So if I click send now, you will see that the previous endpoint that we added here is still valid. And then if we go back, we can see the the content. So we don't have um, any enemies. So I can check the database. So we'll just refresh. And as you can see, we don't have anything. So this is how you just enable the basic security. But what if you would like to add your room user? So let's uh, add one in memory user here so we can define some custom password and username. Let's create a new package and this package will be called config and you can create a new class and this class will be called security config. Security config, it's a class that we would like to enable like a global security for Spring. We would like this to be a component that will be used everywhere. So what we are going to do, it's use this annotation enable web security so enable uh, web security is uh, an annotation that you can see here it's also a configuration and it's enabling global authentication and if you keep going on you will see that it's a component it means that it's a configuration that's going to be auto wired and you can see here the component being from IntelliJ and uh, since we're using Spring there is a lot of polymorphism going on we have to extend the web security configure adapter when we do this there are two things that we have to do for the what we're trying to achieve here first it's to tell that the all the endpoints they should be secured and the, that we would like to create any memory user so let's just refresh here and uh, restart the application and i'm going to show you something so we still have the password look what happens when we overwrite two methods configure one for HTTP security and one for authentication manager builder so in this one we are going to secure all the endpoints so I'm going to write here HTTP not authorize requests and I would like to say hey all the requests or any request that you make to this service make sure that they are authenticated oh and uh, I would like the authentication method to be HTTP basic 
so you have other options you could have a form login for example but i would like to be http basic so when you do this you have the configuration for the http requests that are coming into your server but now we have this authentication manager builder and we have to tell hey now i would like to create my own user so when you are creating a user you have to create a password and you don't want your password to be plain text so we can use a password encoder here password encoder actually password encoder factories create delegating password that by default we it's going to use uh, bycrypt bcrypt and if you go inside this uh, method you can see so the one that's going to be used by default is this one bcrypt and uh, we can uh, let's log something here just make sure that we are with everything working so for example log.info and then we have here testing encoder password and I will just send anything here encoder dot encode and I will just give anything so now with this we should see a different log so as you can see that password generated by spring doesn't exist anymore because we are overriding the configuration for authentication uh, manager builder and this one you will see here that the password encoder is working so this is encrypted now what we would like to do we would like to have an in-memory user so we can uh, just call the auth dot in-memory authentication and then with user we can give any user like dojo and then the password we can uh, use here password encoder dot encode and we can say academy and then we have to tell the roles they're not going to use be used now but we are going to use it later and spring has some default roles for example user role and we can create another user so let's copy this one and say hey i want this user and i want as well William, the same password, but he will be a user and admin. So you can add several roles here, as many as you want, and even the full ones if you have it properly configured in your service. Okay, now I will restart the, the application. I'm going back to Postman, and as you can see here, if we click send, it is still working because of the, the the headers that we have hidden here so we have this basic let's remove this header just go on cookies remove the entire g session id i think that it will remove permanently that one if we try to authenticate again okay now we have 401 this is what we were looking for if we try to use with this user it's not going to work anymore but now if I change here to Dev Dojo and Academy, we can see the results. And if I change to a different type of user, we get 401. If we try William Academy, we get the result. So check the headers. We have here the basic uh, authorization again. So this is how we just set uh, basic authentication using Spring Security. So we have a lot of more to talk about it, but I'm going to continue in the next video. So see you there. Bye.